Hello everyone, this is Benjamin Schumann um, and this is a new video format that I'm going to continue doing in parallel to my blog from now on where I introduce certain simulation models because I think it's much easier to talk about actual simulation models via video and screen sharing and in the past I've started writing a little bit about why simulation and machine learning is extremely useful and I started building a model in any logic that uses reinforcement learning and people were bugging me about oh please share the details how did you actually do it and in the next four videos I want to explore that a little bit. Today we're going to spend a few minutes of learning about reinforcement learning. What is it? What are the use cases and why is simulation super important for it? Uh, in the next video I'm going to introduce you to the to the actual model. I'm going to give you an overview of what it's doing, um, what the different components are in the third video, I'm going to show you the actual agents that are doing this stuff here. As you can see, little things moving around and what it all means. And then in the fourth and final video, I will go into the details of how did I actually make it happen. It's quite a small, elegant uh, model actually that's doing, that is coded from scratch. So it doesn't use any reinforcement learning library. It is actually just coded using pure Java. So it's quite, quite good for educational purposes. So today, let's start with talking about reinforcement learning. What is it actually? Uh, there typically people talk about two types of machine learning, supervised and unsupervised. And if you're not a big fan of machine learning and the hype around it, you would say it's just pattern fitting, which is true to some extent. Obviously, there's a lot of advanced stuff going on there. Reinforcement learning is fundamentally different from that. So it's not, uh, it's not linear regression. Uh, it's not random trees. It's not a random, random forest. Sorry. Um, it is something completely different. It is very easy to explain it with a real example of a, of a child. I've got my a little daughter living here with me. I'm actually here in my kitchen and she uses reinforcement learning all the time because at some point she decides I want to touch the hot oven beside me. And she will notice, oh, it's rather hot. And she will not touch it again, hopefully. Or I tell her off for doing that. And what she gets is uh, a reinforcement of don't do that. There's going to be a penalty if you do it. You're going to have pain. Uh, whereas if I tell her to clean her room and she does it, she gets a little reward. She gets a little smiley on a, on a magnetic board. And that's a reinforcement that, oh, cleaning your room is actually a good thing. So we humans use reinforcement uh, naturally. So do all animals. It's just the way the brain is wired. Um, and you can think of us as agents in an environment trying out different things and storing how those different things went. With um, virtual reinforcement learning, as it is used now, a very similar thing happens. So you can see it here in the model, actually. There's this truck trying to find uh, a way through a maze um, and he's supposed to go to this target location here. And whenever he hits the target location, he gets a huge uh, bonus, a huge reward. Whereas if he just goes onto a cell that has not the, world, not the destination, he gets a, a, a small penalty that accrues over time. And as we'll see, if you do that many, many, many times uh, using a random walk in this case, you will actually learn the best way to your destination from where you started. Reinforcement learning is used quite a lot already these days. Uh, one of the things that made the news a few uh, a year ago, I think, was the AlphaGo algorithm that beat uh, Go players. And it used reinforcement learning to play in a virtual game against uh, other human players, against historical games, and it just observed what happens if I make this move in the game? What happens if I make this move? What is a useful move towards the goal of winning or was it not a useful move? And if you do that millions of times, you get really good at playing any kind of game. It's also used in robotics. So actually the, um, the I think the curiosity or some of the rovers on Mars use reinforcement learning to um, navigate across the across the surface of the Mars. Um, and the the fundamentals are really simple. It is really just you being an agent in a simulated environment 
trying different things out, you either get a penalty or you get a reward and you remember each way so that in the future when you're supposed to do the task again, you follow the path that led to a really good reward. So with this uh, very simple example here, people have done many, much more complicated things. For example, they let they they learn Super Mario. They let a computer learn how to play Super Mario. You know that little jumping man that you had in your Game Boy a few years ago. Um, they wrote a program that basically jumps randomly across the Super Mario landscape millions of times, and in the end. The result was that they could win Super Mario in a speed that no human could ever do. They basically found the optimal path, when to jump, when to get bonuses and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's very fascinating. It's also used in autonomous driving a lot because, again, it's very useful to try something out in a virtual environment. And you as a car will get a penalty if you hit a pedestrian, obviously, and you'll get a reward if, be, if you behave nicely. So it's it's very good to learn very very unstructured uh, for very unstructured environments that you don't know much about. Now, why is this really useful for simulation? It's one of those machine learning techniques that you actually need simulation for. You need to have a virtual environment because obviously you could do reinforcement learning in reality, but it's very slow. My daughter takes 18 years to grow up and learn all this stuff. Uh, if you wanted to learn autonomous driving in reality, it would be painfully slow and also just not ethical because you don't want it, pedestrians. So you need to have a virtual environment to actually learn. So there needs to be somebody who recreates the virtual environment and sets it up in a way that it behaves realistically according to your actions. And that's where we as a simulation community come in. Because I think from what I hear the the machine learning community, they, they don't even know much about us. They just write their own simulation programs. But you could argue we are, you know, we are the experts. We've done it for decades. So we should get involved. We should help them um, not build simulation models from scratch because there are really advanced tools out there. And there could be a really good symbiosis here. Anyway, that's the first video. I wanted to introduce uh, reinforcement learning. I hope you enjoyed watching this little car randomly uh, move across this landscape and next time I'll introduce you to this model in more detail. Thanks a lot.